So, <laughs> yeah. Are you following the Artas one? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you are on. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Right. So, I'm just going to uh, read the questions and people's answers. Uh, it's going to be the first take. Can you unlock your phone? I don't know when I'd be able to read them. You're blocking the camera. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the first question was, have you ever changed shift your diet to reduce the consumption of meat? How long for or how long ago? Yes, three, de three years ago. Three years or 15 years ago. <laughs> I changed my food habit four years ago. Maybe 10 years ago? No, I haven't. Yes, I stopped buying red meat in supermarkets and switched to chicken for everything. I started reducing meat two years ago, being full and vegetarian for one year. Yes, more than once. The first time, maybe eight years ago, or maybe two years. For maybe two years. Second time, a year ago. I stopped eating meat and animal products in January this year, entirely. I went vegetarian suddenly at 10 years old. I couldn't differentiate between the flesh of my pets that I loved so much and the meat on a plate that I was provided with growing up. This was though for me as I didn't like vegetables. I ate potato and sweet corn, that's all. As I grew up in my teenage years, I learned how to cook vegetables as well in ways that my mother never knew. This allowed me to expand my diet, become more, much more healthy. I am now 23 years old and have never consumed meat since. I've had vegan phases, but usually end them over to due to health reasons after a few months. I hope that I can learn how to be vegan in a healthy way one day and make it a long-term diet of mine. Yes, I went veggie seven years ago and going flexibly vegan about four years ago. I stopped eating meat about five years ago and even before that hardly ate any. I don't eat meat because I love animals and don't crave it. I do eat fish max once a week for Omega. Yes, six years ago. No, but I think about it. Yes, I was vegetarian for three years and have been vegan for a year. I became a full vegan in April 2018 after approximated four months of not eating red meat. Six years ago to veggie. Five to vegan. Yes, only recently have I become veggie. Yes, in 2016 for a year and a half. And there's, yeah, because I didn't have time. I just received the answers, so. Um, yes, yes, since this last summer and shifted to reduce my consumption of meat as much as possible about a month ago. Okay, let's jump to the second question. How would you describe the meat industry in your own words? Um, vicious, selfish, over-intensive, out of touch, Auschwitz. Hell, a room of tortures. No, I think it needs to exist, but it should exist on a much smaller scale. Manipulative in the sense that people have been convinced to think you cannot live without it. Delicious. In my view, the keyword is cruel. They don't think about how these animals feel or live. Environmentally awful. Yummy. Something obsolete that is governed by higher interests that have nothing to do with nutrition or nourishment. Horrible. I do eat meat from my friend's farm because I do because I know the animals have really good lives. It can be lovely, small organic crafts like Lindbrook Croft, but not on a bigger scale. The meat industry is horrific, it repulses and sickens me. I hate that humans do this to other animals on this planet. It makes me almost ashamed to be human. I try to distance myself from these horrors by my own diet and ethics, but it, it still continues. The cruelty is hard to put into words, but the gut instinct and repulsion is clear. It's not only murder, but torture and abuse as well. Unnecessary suffering and exploration of life. Scary, cruel and upsetting and dark. Harrowing. Mass consumerism. As a whole is a concept I have always struggled to understand, but when it comes to life, not only animals, but human livelihoods, at stake, shocking. An unnecessary luxury and an artificial necessity endorsed by lobbies for too long. Problematic, need to change certain processes. Big overkill, a big waste, not sustainable. I'm sorry, Wood. <laughs> I'll try to like keep it. Thank you. Um, 
um, one of humanity's biggest mistakes, a gruesome business, a rampant industry to feed even more people, prioritizing speed and volume over sustainability. Third question. How responsible do you feel about the industrial meat impact? Why? A little. I eat way too much chicken. I do not contribute, so I do not feel responsible of the impact this industry has. Humans are the consumers that meat is provided for, so humans are responsible. High density production and harvesting of animals for human consumption. Somewhat, I still eat chicken, which is actually equitable to fish farming and tofu. I don't currently spend money on it, so not hugely responsible, but at other times I've felt more responsible. I don't really feel responsible, but I feel concerned, and so I try others to be too. I feel very responsible and I still eat meat. I see it necessary for my diet and it annoys me. I feel like I am in a lucky position to be able to stop eating meat easily. So I do not so I do feel a larger responsibility. I think you're more responsible if you purchase the products. As a student in climate change, I feel very responsible. I it leads to deforestation and CO2 release. Not responsible now I don't consume animal products. Even though I don't consume meat myself, I still feel responsible as a human to try and stop other humans continuing this horror. I wish I know I knew the best way to do this. Vegan and vegetarian get a bad reputation of being pushy with their ethics. It's human race doing this, so of course we're all responsible. I think governments should be doing a little bit more cheap meat. A little bit more cheap meat should not be allowed. I think we can all be responsible of our choices if we have the privilege to choose. Let's, as we are the consumers, so together we can stop the consumption or demand. Although I do not consume meat at all, I still feel responsible as I cannot control the consumption and impacts of others. It's a universal issue out of my power. 10%? Even in being vegan, as consumption of meat-like products somehow let it legitimizes that this exists as well as implicit, complicit in never taking a stance against family and friends. We all need to work together to fix this problem, reduce the environment impact. I am, I am eating a grain of sun on a beach, but hopefully I can make a difference even small. All right. Um, we're just gonna leave this because we, we might not have time. Um, number four, what was your biggest reason behind your decision of making this, of, of changing this behavior? Empathy and information, to know how, where from it comes and who benefits from it really. Perceiving it as unethical, environment, earthing, earthlings, and to come over to death of someone very close to me. Mainly animal ethics, also environmental. I simply thought, why would I eat meat if I am not able to kill the animal myself? Originally, it was a healthy a health decision, which then became environmental and caring for animals. Environmental reasons and then more ethical uh, realizations afterwards. Environmental reasons originally plus the benefit gained from animal product doesn't justify suffering. Environmental and land use. When I first fully read into the water and land needed in order for some of the poorest people to feed the wealthiest, it was enough to determine. My simple child brain couldn't differentiate the meat of my bones, my cat bones or a chicken nugget. This just didn't sit right with me and made me uneasy. It was all the same to me, even before I was aware of the cutlery involved. My love for animals and seeing how badly they are treated in this industry. Ethical for daily choices, but environmental for the lifestyle change. Just because I love animals and realize I should show I love them. There was no reason to. A lot of it... No, no reason not to. A lot of it was environmental, but it was also cheaper and tastier. Non-sustainable, not good for you to eat it so much meat. Fifth question, this, this one and one more. Uh, how would you feel if you never did it? 
once informed I informed I wouldn't be able to look at something else and forget about it. I would have not felt in accordance to myself. I would feel guilty on my diet's impact on, on animals and the environment. Probably guilty and hypocritical. Hypocritical. I don't think I would be as healthy as I am now and not as in control over my diet. Like I could be doing more to help the planet. Probably wouldn't bother me as I would avoid the issue. I feel that even in two, three years, the growing awareness of the others would have piled guilt on to me by now. But it's easy to be an ignorant skeptic of which there are still too many. I think I would be a much more unhealthy person if I never went vegetarian. My diet would lack nutrition. I feel like this is the biggest way I can help the environment on my own. No clue, haha, but maybe I'd ignore the guilt. I know I would regret it or feel guilty. Probably like I wanted to do it but was too scared to make a move. Environmental impact. Guilt. I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't have felt as bad as if I didn't do it. And the last question. Can you give a sentence or two about the way you feel personally about meat industry? It doesn't sit right with me. It is an industry based in commercial interest that does not fix the suffering of animals, neither it does in the environmental impact that it takes to maintain it. It's all based on high densities, which can come along with consequences such as poor quality, poor living conditions, poor slaughtering method. Although meat needs to meet demands of the population's diet, it is still wrong to produce. I think they should change the way they produce and focus more in the quality they give. Dislike the negative uh, behavior towards environment and hope pressure forces them to change. Like you could need to buy locally to destroy it. We think we are better than all, to, all other nature and we abuse that. Selfishness destroys the planet. Moreover, the deforestation. Meat industry also participates in animal cruelty. I feel that the people in it aren't evil, but there should be help for them to more, to, to more away from it because it's unjust. I carry the weight of my guilt, confused, angry. How can I justify so much destruction for a need of protein? People need to think more for themselves and get out of this lifestyle. Eat some lentils. <laughs> Big market for glutinous people. It isn't needed in our diet every day, not this much. I feel horrified and ashamed about the meat industry. It's a deep mark on humanity. It upsets me and I am shocked how little people care about meat consumption. It shocks me that because most people say they love their own animals and would never eat them. Mm, I feel conflicted. It's it's in so much culture, but it can be so detrimental. And I think that's it. And now we're gonna proceed to the painting. <laughs> so yes, I originally thought of doing this uh, from my headphones but it's not gonna work with the life so we're just gonna have to listen to it together um yeah so i need just to someone to like press the button and then i'll be fine i just want to cover my eyes <coughs> hold on just i don't know if i have a hurt eye actually oh there's a hurt eye there i think <laughs> Okay, I can't see anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, you can you can start. In the next few minutes, you will be given an eye-opening look behind the closed doors of modern farms, hatcheries, and slaughter plants, revealing the journey that animals make from farm to fridge. For nearly their entire four-month pregnancies, mother sows are locked in narrow metal stalls barely larger than their own bodies. Many of the animals develop open sores and scratches. Workers often kick, hit, and yell at pigs to move them. Soon after birth, piglets are castrated by workers who cut into their skin, 
and rip out their testicles. Next, the workers chop off their tails. Both of these painful procedures are nearly always done without anesthesia. Many animals die from botched mutilations. Piglets who become sick or injured or who are not growing quickly enough are killed. Common killing methods include throwing animals into bins and painfully gassing them with carbon dioxide. Others are killed by being slammed headfirst into the ground. At a factory farm in Ohio, workers killed injured sows by hanging them on a forklift to be slowly strangled to death, a practice defended by the pork industry. Pigs raised for meat typically live only five to six months, a mere fraction of their natural lifespan in overcrowded pens like this. Workers frequently tattoo the animals with ID numbers by hitting them with metal spiked mallets. Once pigs have reached market weight, they are sent to slaughter. At the slaughterhouse, pigs are knocked in the head with a steel rod, hung upside down, and have their throats slit. Improper stunning condemns many pigs to having their throats slit while they are fully conscious and suffering. Others are even scalded alive in the hair removal tanks. From the moment they hatch, the egg industry subjects chicks to horrors few of us can even imagine. At the hatchery, workers quickly and roughly sort the males from the females. Because male chicks don't lay eggs and do not grow quickly enough to be raised profitably for meat, they are killed within hours after hatching. Male chicks are typically thrown into giant grinding machines while still alive. This practice is deemed standard and acceptable by the egg industry. Another killing method is to drop male chicks into trash bags to be smothered or suffocated. More than 200 million unwanted male chicks are killed on their first day of life each year in the United States. The females have it even worse, destined for a life of prolonged cruelty. To reduce pecking induced by overcrowded living conditions, workers use a hot blade or laser to remove part of the chick's beaks. This mutilation can cause both acute and chronic pain. After de-beaking, the birds are moved to cages where they will spend the rest of their lives. Nearly 95% of egg-laying hens spend their lives confined in tiny wire cages like this. Most birds never see sunlight or breathe fresh air. They are packed so tightly they cannot even spread their wings, walk or turn around without pushing other birds aside. The harsh and unrelenting environment of the cage takes its toll, often leading to severe feather loss, open wounds, and birds trapped in cage wire. For many hens, the stressful confinement is too much, leading to premature death. Undercover investigations at egg farms from coast to coast have revealed a culture of cruelty and neglect, including workers stomping on birds, throwing live hens on dead piles and in trash cans, and painfully mangling bird spines in botched attempts to break their necks. At one or two years of age, when a hen's egg production begins to decline, she is violently whipped from her cage. Workers often fling the birds into metal carts where they are painfully suffocated with carbon dioxide. Crowded by the thousands into filthy sheds, chickens and turkeys are denied many of their most basic natural behaviors and needs, such as fresh air and exercise. Through genetic selection, chickens and turkeys raised for meat have been bred to grow so large so quickly that many suffer crippling leg disorders, chronic joint pain, and even fatal heart attacks. Sick or injured birds often have their necks broken. Others are clubbed to death. Those who live to reach market rate are thrown into transport crates and loaded onto trucks bound for slaughter plants. Handling is often violent and frequently causes bruises, broken bones, and other injuries. 
At the slaughter plant, the birds are dumped from their crates, then roughly snapped upside down into moving shackles by their fragile legs. From there, the birds are dragged through an electrified vat of water, which renders them paralyzed, but not necessarily unconscious. They are then pulled across a blade, which slices their throats, causing blood to pour from their necks. Some of the birds who miss the blade have their throats slit or their heads ripped off by a backup killer. Other birds are drowned and scalded in the tanks of hot water designed to loosen the bird's feathers. Cows produce milk for the same reasons that humans do, to nourish their young. But calves on dairy farms are dragged away from their mothers and violently killed, all so that humans can have the milk instead. The majority of today's dairy cows are confined on factory farms. Some spend almost their entire lives standing on concrete floors. Others are crammed into massive mud lots. Workers subject young cows to painful mutilations and amputations. Here, a worker cuts off a cow's tail, slicing through her sensitive skin, nerves, and bones without any painkillers. Another routine practice is dehorning, burning into the calves' skulls to remove their buddy horns. Painkillers are rarely used. A 2010 undercover investigation at a dairy farm in Ohio revealed a farm worker stabbing cows with pitchforks, beating them in the head with crowbars, and punching baby calves. Injuries and illness often run rampant in filthy, disease-ridden factory farm environments. Cows too sick or injured to stand are called downers and are often left to slowly suffer and die from their injuries. At a fraction of their natural lifespan, the so-called spent dairy cows are prodded under transport trucks and shipped to slaughterhouses. An undercover investigation at a slaughterhouse in California revealed down dairy cows being kicked, shocked, pushed with forklifts, and water hosed in the mouth and nostrils in an effort to get them to the kill floor. Most cattle raised for beef endure several mutilations without painkillers, including castration and hot iron branding. Most spend the last few months of their lives in overcrowded feedlots, standing in their own waste. Unreliable stunning practices at the slaughterhouse condemn okay. many cattle to having their throats I'm cut not. and their limbs hacked off while still alive. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, just didn't want it to be too long. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Nine minutes, so I can't even see. So basically, apparently, this is what I did. Wow, this is interesting. <sighs> we can have this as the end of the video. Thank you everybody for giving me these answers and inspiring me to, to actually do this. Um, do we see how many people are? Is there anyone? There's no one on your own. Can you tell? Four people. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be four weeks. Fish I'm gonna not eat meat at all. And who have a demonstrated capacity see how it to goes. Suffer pain. Massive Let's trawling <laughs> nets indiscriminately drag hundreds of tons of fish and other animals along the ocean floor. As the